Hi there trailer owners. Today in your 2017 Grand Design Reflection, we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install Roadmaster's Comfort Ride Leaf Spring System with shock absorbers. And this is what our system is going to look like when it's installed. We're going to be taking a look at some of the components underneath to give you a better idea how it works. But the big thing here is you can see that we no longer have an equalizer here in the middle as our slipper spring box takes its place. The big benefit of this is that with your equalizers, whenever you hit a bump or pothole or anything with one axle, as it moves up or down, it will send some of those forces to the other axle, causing it to move. With the slipper spring system here, each axle is going to be completely independent. So this one, as it moves up and down, the leaf spring here can slip inside the box without ever affecting the leaf spring or axle behind it. Here on the back side, we can see our slipper spring box and where our shocks mount to it. This provides us with an additional level of comfort because as our suspension wants to go down, our shocks will dampen that and it'll also dampen it when it retracts, preventing up and down movement. It also, it really helps prevent a lot of chucking that you get with your trailers. We're now looking inside the slipper box from underneath and you can see here's our leaf spring where it's angled and this is the roller that it rides on. So as your suspension moves up and down, it can flex and roll on this roller, but it can never come off if our suspension were to be hanging. This lip here would catch on the roller and prevent it from coming down. You can see that it's not connected in any way to our rear axle. And over here's our other axle. You can see the other roller and leaf spring and they're not attached in any way. So this is the real big part of the system is that we no longer have any connection between one axle to the other transferring those forces. This greatly improves the ride quality of the trailer, but beyond that it also helps increase the safety of it because if one axle is not affecting the other, there is more pressure pushing downward on our axles to keep our tires on the road, which increases our surface area of our tires on the road surface. This increases our grip, so we're going to get better traction and greatly increases the stopping performance of our trailer. This system is designed for a tandem axle setup with axles rated between 5,200 pounds and 7,000 pounds. Included with your kit, you'll receive four shocks, two for each side, one per axle on each side. You'll also receive new leaf springs for each side for each axle, as these leaf springs are redesigned to work with the slippers, so they only have an eye bolt on one side and the other side has the slipper end. You'll also receive in your kit all the brackets and hardware necessary to get everything installed. That includes the hardware to mount the spring box, as well as everything you need for your shocks. You also receive all the brackets and mounting hardware you need to get everything installed. So that's all the hardware for your slipper box to get it up, as well as getting all of your shocks mounted. And I really like the way they provided multiple adjustment brackets for your shocks to ensure that it's going to be a fit for your trailer. These long arms that you see here are your adjustments, and there's multiple holes so you can get the perfect adjustment for your shocks so that way you'll get the most benefit fully extended as well as fully retracted. And there's multiple holes to mount your shock on so you can get the appropriate length for your shock to fully extend and retract without binding up. And for those of you who do all the maintenance on your own trailer, this is going to be a better setup as far as being able to lift your trailer. With your factory equalizers, if you were to lift up the trailer by its frame so you can take the wheels off and maybe service the brakes, often what happens is the axles will fall down and the shackles that connect your equalizer to the eyelet on your leaf springs, the leaf spring ends up dropping down below. So when you go to set your trailer back down, it's still in this position and it's not going to ride correctly until you readjust that shackle up above with the eyelet above your equalizer. And that can sometimes be a difficult thing to do. You can do it with a jack by jacking up the axle and working back and forth to get it to pop into place. But that's often an extra 15, 20 minutes after you've performed your maintenance that you really don't want to have to mess with. And with this system, we just lift it up, do whatever we needed to do, lower it down, and it's going to be right back into its proper position. Now that we've gone over some of the features, let's go over the installation together so you can have the confidence to do it at home. We'll begin our installation by lifting our trailer up and supporting it on jack stands. You can use your floor jack to do so. If you have levelers on here, you can also use those to assist you, but make sure that the trailer is supported on jack stands underneath the frame. Once you've got it lifted up with your tires hanging off the ground, you can go ahead and remove the tires all the way around. If you don't have an impact to remove the tires, you want to make sure that you crack them loose with your wrench before you lift it up off the ground or else it's going to be very difficult. Once you've got all the tires removed, we can put jack stands 
underneath our axles, we want one on each side for each axle. So we need four total for this setup because we're going to have to be dropping these down to replace some components, but we don't want it to drop down too far because of our electric trailer brakes here. The wiring on the back here is only so long. So if we go down too far, we could potentially damage that wiring. We're also going to place our floor jack under the first area that we're going to be working so we can easily lift it up and down as need be. The jack stand's just there for support in case we lower it down, we've got something to set it on. Or if we accidentally drop it, it's going to hit that stand and not fall all the way down. Once we've got a little support underneath of it with our jacks, so we can control it. We're going to remove the nuts on our leaf spring here, here, so we can get this side and drop it down some. We're gonna go ahead and take out the other nut here as well, because these are often tied together by a bracket. So normally you can't just take one out without taking the other one out. We're removing these nuts using an 18 millimeter socket. We can then tap these out. Now, we're not gonna be reusing them, but just in case you wanted to save them, you can thread the nuts just a little bit back on the ends. This way, when you go to hit it with a hammer, you're not gonna damage the threads. If you have no intentions on reusing them, then you can just hammer them right on out. And once you get so far, it may stop. You can just use a screwdriver or a punch, just a little something to tap it out. You can maneuver your jack up and down a little bit to help take off some tension which can make it a little bit easier if they're really stuck. But if they're pushing out pretty easy like this with just little taps, just go ahead and tap it on out. The one over on this side is the same way. We're gonna start it with the nut on there. And we can go ahead and pull that one out as well. And this is another one you may need to lift your jack up or down just a little bit to help free it up some. You can also use your screwdriver to finish punching out as well. So we can now go ahead and lower down our axle onto our jack stands and then we can repeat the same process on the rear axle. Once you've got this side lowered down we can then repeat the same process on the other side to lower that side down as well so our axles are going to be completely disconnected from our trailer. Once they're completely free we can move them to one side. So I used an extra set of hands just to help me slide them because they are heavy and I didn't want to tip the jack stands over and this is just going to give us a little bit easier access to remove our leaf springs so we can get our tool in there because otherwise our frame's going to be right above it and it'll be difficult to get any tools in. We'll then take a 22 millimeter socket and we're going to remove all the nuts on our U-bolts that hold our leaf springs on. We do need to save our U-bolts and the hardware here. The only thing we don't want is the leaf spring. We're just going to take all this off. Make sure to catch your U-bolt when you take off the last nut. Sometimes the U-bolts get stuck, kind of like this one here. So we'll just tap that one out then. Set our plate aside. And then set our leaf spring off to the side. Next, we're going to be placing up our center section here. This is going to slide over where your factory equalizer used to go and it's going to line up the slotted hole here with this slot but before we can put it on we need to move any components out of the way that are going to be blocking it from the frame so the under shield here will have to move this hose will have to be rerouted and any foam and stuff will have to be removed so we're just going to take our razor knife and move any hardware and stuff out of the way until it's clear on the frame the components on your trailer may vary so just remove anything that's in the way With your under shielding, you want to try to remove as little as possible so you don't have much to reseal when you're done. We can then prepare our hardware. This is going to be the largest bolt that comes in your kit. We're going to place a flat washer on it. We can then place our center section here up. Now that we've got everything moved out of the way, this hose here, I'm just going to push over for now and I can resecure it after we get the center section up. When you go to hold the center section up, we'll also need to place a spacer in between our factory piece. So if it doesn't fit like, like here, 
you'll need to bend this piece until it does fit. It's important that this piece stays perpendicular with the frame. It's more than likely not allowing the piece in from when we removed the bolt, since they are a press fit bolt yet to knock them out. It likely bent it inward, so we're just going to bend this flange out just a little bit to make the spacer fit. With our spacer in place, we can now put our center section up. Make sure not to pinch any components. And then slide the bolt that we prepared from the outside in. You also want to make sure that you have the sticker on the outside where it's labeled outside. Then on the back side, we're going to place a flat washer followed by a, a nylon locking nut. We're just going to leave it loose at this time. We'll now need to drill holes up into the frame so we can install the self-tapping screws that hold it in place. There's two on each side. You'll see the slotted holes here. And our center section here still pivots. We want to make sure that when it's installed, it's installed even down the frame. We don't want it to be cocked to one side. Now that we've got it held up there by our center bolt though, we can go ahead and drill out the hole for our self-tappers. And we're going to use a 21 64ths drill bit to do so. We can then install the self tapper in the hole that we just made. We want to put some thread locker on it. It doesn't come included with your kit, but you can pick some up here at eTrailer.com. We'll then use a 9 16th socket to run it into the hole that we had just drilled. And right before we get it all the way tight, this is where we want to check and get it to where it's nice and straight going down our frame. And we'll snug it up and then we can drill out the rest of our holes and this way it'll ensure that it stays straight while we're doing drilling. Now with all four installed, we can go back and torque them to the specifications found in our instructions. We're using a 9 16th socket to tighten and torque these. We can now take our new leaf spring and we're going to put it in position up over the axle, place the end that does not have an eyelet up inside your box, and then on the other side we're going to work our eyelet in back to where our factory spring used to be attached. We'll then attach it using the factory bolt that held our factory leaf spring in. The bolts that hold your leaf springs in do have serrated edges on them, so you want to tap them in with a hammer until they sit flush. And then we'll loosely secure it with a nut on the opposite side. We can now put the hardware in over here on our spring box size. You'll see that you have two sets of holes. You'll have a larger set and a smaller set. The smaller sets for the stop that holds the spring to prevent it from going down, and the larger sets for our roller. We want to use the set of holes that makes our leaf spring level when it's installed. So this is about level right here. So we're going to be using the upper hole. If we use the upper hole for the smaller bolt here where it rests on to make it level, that means we're going to use the upper hole for our roller as well. Now this is the bolt that it comes with. It's almost as long as the big bolt we used before, but it's much skinnier. That's going to slide through a spacer as well, so you'll have to hold your leaf spring up. We determined the upper holes is the better holes for us, so we're going to just line up this spacer with those holes, then slide our bolt from the outside in through the spacer and then out the other side. We'll then secure it with a locking nut on the other side. We're just going to leave it loose at this time as well. We'll then take our roller. This is the larger metallic spacer, not the powder coated ones. This is going to line up with the holes here. Now, since we use the top hole for our safety bolt or our stop here, we're going to be using the top hole for the roller. So we're just going to set that in there, line it up with that top hole, 
slide our large bolt. This is the same size as the center bolt here that we used all the way through the spacer and our center section and then loosely secure it with a nylon locking nut. Now that we've got this leaf spring loosely installed, we're going to repeat the same process to install the leaf spring on the other axle. We can then go back and tighten down our hardware. For the larger bolts here, we're going to use a 22 millimeter socket and wrench. And then our smaller bolts will tighten down with a 16 millimeter socket and wrench. We can then go back and torque all of our hardware to the specifications found in our instructions. Don't forget to tighten and torque down your eyelet bolts either. Our factory hardware was an 18 millimeter socket for our nut. The torque specs you'll find at the back of your instructions are generic torque specs, we'll be using those. Now if you purchase the kit that only includes slipper springs, then we can reinstall our axles in reverse order of how we removed them. You'll want to make sure that the peg at the bottom of the leaf spring here lines up with the hole in your axle. This will sit directly under it. And then you'll use your factory clamps with your U-bolts to secure the plate directly on top, just like our old leaf spring was. If you purchase the kit that comes with shocks, then we're going to be replacing our factory hardware with the new shock hardware. And we'll show you how to do that now. I've gone ahead and slid my axle back over. So that way the hole in the top of the axle lines up with the peg on the bottom of our leaf spring. We'll then take our shock mount plate. This is gonna replace the factory one that used to be on here. This is just going to sit here. We want the end where our shock's going to attach to to be facing towards the center of our trailer and then also between the two axles. And this will just line up with the hole right there for the alignment peg. And then we're just going to reinstall our factory U-bolts. Once you've got your U-bolt and all of your pegs lined up, place your washers back on top and then secure it with the factory nuts. We're gonna do the same thing on the other side of our bracket here with the other U-bolt. Once you get one installed, it does help kind of hold it together a little bit, but I'd still keep some pressure under it while you're getting the next one in place. We'll then place flat washers and nuts on top of this U-bolt as well. We'll now want to tighten and torque our U-bolts. You want to make sure you go back and forth to tighten them down evenly. Then we can go back and torque them with our 22 millimeter socket. We're then going to repeat that for the remaining three leaf springs. Now that we've got all of our axles back in place, we can put our tires back on and then lower our vehicle back down so all the weight is on our tires again. We need it to be in this position to properly orient our shocks to where they're going to be able to stretch to their maximum as well as compress to their minimum without going beyond their limits. Now that you've got your wheels back on and it's back on the ground, you want to make sure you torque all of your lug nuts and then chalk your wheels because we're going to be working underneath. Now that we're on the ground, we can get our shocks set. They have a strap around them, and this puts them at the length they need to be for the resting position. So you want to make sure you leave this strap on. If it does break, or if it wasn't on there when you got your kit, there are length measurements in your instructions for you to set the shock up to this specified length here. We'll begin by attaching the top of our shock. Now, since we put on the slipper spring kit, we're going to be attaching ours to the hole here on our slipper spring kit. This is provided for the shock. If you're not putting slipper springs on and you're just adding shocks, these brackets come included with your shock kit and they would install behind your equalizer bracket and that would give you your upper mounting hole 
for your shock. We won't be using these since we have the slipper spring kit. We'll now take the long metric bolt that comes in your kit. You'll know it's metric with the reading there on the top, 8.8, .8, indicating that it's a metric grade bolt. We're gonna slide a washer on it. We'll then go through our eyelet at the top of our shock here. That's gonna be the fatter side. On the other side of our bolt then, we're going to place a spacer. And then we're gonna place a wedge plate. And the wedge plate that we're putting on, we want to have the thick part at the bottom when we have it installed. We can then come up here to the hole in our slipper spring box, slide the bolt on that, make sure that our wedge is facing down on the thick part. And then on the inside, we're gonna follow that up with another wedge, but this one's gonna be in the opposite orientation with the thick part facing towards the top. We'll then follow that up with a washer and a locking nut. We're just gonna leave this loosely installed for now. You do wanna keep in mind though that when we go to tighten it down, we want that thick part of our washer to face up on the inside on our wedge washer. And then on the one on the outside, we want the thick part facing down. We can then line up the lower eyelet of our shock with our mounting plate that we installed on top of the axle. Now here it's not gonna line up and that's fine. It may or may not on yours. On this particular one here, we're not gonna line up. So we get extension plates that come with our kit and you can see here that if we line up the holes they will match up with that on our mounting plate here and this will just give us another mounting hole lower down for us to place it on. And it looks like we're going to be using ours in the lowest position since it lines up with that bottom hole there. If yours doesn't line up with the bottom we do have three holes here. As long as two of these holes line up so we can attach it to the mounting plate here we can attach, we can use our extension here to attach our shock to. We're using the lowest position here where we're going to have bolts in these holes and the bottom ones where our shock's going to attach. But if yours didn't line up there, you could move it up and align it with those holes. And if it still needs to be higher, you can take it off completely and attach your shock directly to one of these holes. But you can see here, it is not going to line up. So we're going to take the shorter standard bolts that come in our kit. We'll know they're standard based on the dash marks on top of the head of the bolt. We're going to hold up our extension plate, lining up the holes. We want the furthest down position, so we'll slide those through and then secure it with a locking nut on the other side. One of the things you'll notice here is that this nut is a little bit thicker than the nut that we used on the shock because this is a standard nut and this one's metric. There really aren't any hash marks or numbers written on it to tell you that this one is metric and this one's standard, but you can see here that the metric one that we use on the shock is smaller than the standard one here as far as height. Now that we've got that loosely installed, we're going to Use another one of the long metric bolts like we used up top. Place a flat washer on it. We're gonna slide through the eyelet on our shock. That's gonna come through and we're gonna go through another spacer. And then this is going to line up right there. Push that through and then we'll secure it with a flat washer and a locking nut on the opposite side. We can then go back and tighten down all of our hardware using a 19 millimeter socket and wrench. We can then go back and torque all of our hardware to the specifications found in our instructions. Now with them fully installed and torqued down, we can remove our straps. Sometimes if they're loose like this, because when you tighten everything down, it might compress it just a little bit to give it some slack, you can just pull it off. But if yours don't provide you with any slack, then you can just use your cutters and just cut the strap. Make sure you do not do this though until you've got all your hardware installed and torqued.
And that completes our installation of Roadmaster's Comfort Ride Leaf Spring System with shock absorbers on our 2017 Grand Design Reflection.